Well, welcome here to round number four of the High Tech Oil Super Series. We're two hours west out of Brisbane at Morgan Park Raceway, just outside of Warwick. I'm Matt Kavanagh. Stephen White joined me. A fantastic round, and what a facility this is. Yeah, magnificent, Matty. Fantastic track. When you look at it, you think, gee, is it going to be tight? But, gee, it's a fast little racetrack, and some of these guys, particularly our TA2 guys, are finding that out really quickly. May has been some fantastic racing already this weekend. Of course, we've got seven categories here and over 130 entrants. Can you believe it? Yeah, amazing. You know, the, the, the Queensland Motorsport if you like the public and certainly the competitors is a magnificent group and they're so keen to do some motorsport so when you know we've obviously put the lifeline out and said well, we're going to run the high tech oil super series here at Morgan Park and they all came running so fantastic yeah. no surprise we're kicking it off with the TA2 muscle cars framed by high tech still framing about to come out on track you can see them lined up behind us race number three it's going to be super exciting of course 20 laps for the TA2 muscle car and another person who gets very excited about it is Wade Orger let's get up to him right now there is absolutely so much to love about this class. Let's take a look at the High Tech Oils highlights from our previous race and very tight start. Josh Haynes was the man who edged into the race lead with Jackson Rice right there with him, but wasn't long until Rice put the pressure on and was able to slip through to the lead after Haynes made a rare mistake and got into the bush. This battle here though, you had Brad Gartner, Josh Haynes, and Dylan Thomas. And this is where it became a bare knuckle pub brawl between Gartner and Dylan Thomas in that CXC Mustang. Thomas tried many times to fire up the inside on the South Aussie. And in the end, he thought, you know what? The inside doesn't seem to be working. I'll have to try something different. Matt McKeldon took the Kubota Tractors Stellatech entry off the racetrack, birthday boy. This is the pass by Thomas on the outside. And here's a look at what all the action looked like from the inside. It's been such a great championship so far. This is the seven car of Jackson Rice. Tremendous racing everywhere you care to look. And ooh, a little bit of contact. So it's been going on everywhere you care to look. And that's kind of what we love about this style of racing. This guy here, Jackson Rice, was phenomenal in that Dream Racing Australia entry. Nice drive from Josh Haynes in second. And Brad Gardner, what a comeback here. Pulls off a Lazarus. Massive comeback. And takes the third spot away from Dylan Thomas. Great aerial shot. So this tremendous venue it really has surprised me. First time for me here at the Morgan Park Raceway nearby beautiful Warwick in Queensland. And the circuit has really surprised a lot of these drivers that have never been here before and those that have were looking forward to coming back and being a part of it. There's some really great late breaking opportunities, as Ian Luff would always say, the last of the late breakers. And there's tremendous competition right across the castes here, that is for sure. There's plenty ahead. We can't wait to get the TA2 Muscle Car Series framed by High Tech on track very shortly. Tough start to the 2023 season of the TA2 muscle cars framed by high tech still framing from Brad Gardner. You've had a couple of incidents, but the car's back. Yeah, the car's back thanks to everyone at High Tech Oil Super Series and um, TA2 Racing Australia and everyone getting behind me. And we've got some awesome new partners on board, so yeah, can't wait to get out there and um, yeah, just keep pushing. Big accident there at Queensland Raceway in round number three. What was some of the damage done to the car? Uh, so a lot of cosmetic stuff, uh, yeah, moved the uh, motor off the engine mounts and snapped all them, so massive job by PBR, like Cam, Benny, Mark and the whole team. And a lot of the fans at home saw that, it was over 200 kilometres an hour, the car went backwards into a tyre barrier. How did you come out of that and how do you feel? I was pretty shaken up to be honest, you know, I had like Thomas Randall and Marcus Ambrose and a few guys message me and just reminding me that it's the worst feeling that a race car driver will ever feel. So. Um, yeah, just pushed on and I was pretty nervous up until getting in the car yesterday, so really stoked now to be in it. You're having PBR distributors now as part of your team, it's got to give you some confidence. Yeah, definitely, knowing that they've spent the spanners on it and, um, you know, you, everything's in the factory, it's the best parts, they look after them well and Cam, is, he knows the TA2 car inside out, he eats, sleeps and breathes them, so it's really good, peace of mind for us, peace of mind for the sponsors and it's good. 
damage like that always hits the budget a little bit. Do you got some support for this round? Yeah, so that was hard. Nah. If anything, we we're going to call call the season quits or at least this one and bounce back. But thanks to everyone at High Tech Oil Super Series, um, got behind me and we've got um, Australian Tarmac Rally and um, Mountain Motorsports and uh, just a heap of good people, a heap of local sponsors from down home, so can't thank them enough. What we really want to know is, is it true? Can we announce it here at the High Tech Oil Super Series? Are you on the next season of Farmer Wants a Wife? Oh. Yeah, nah, definitely not. Nah, my brother actually got asked, so I might have to take it off him. <laughs>
on the inside of Cheney, squirming under load with those big Willwood brakes on the Hoosier tyres. And he makes a nice pass through. Go say good day to one of my best mates, Heath McCallum, tuned in and watching from down in Melbourne, love with his beautiful daughter, Emmy, and all the team. Heath, you got this, buddy. We're right behind you, mate. Just watching Jackson on the outside now of Bates as well. Hasn't been the best of starts for Nick Bates this weekend. We know he's capable of a lot better. He just hasn't had a good run so far. Yeah, got pushed down after race number one with a little incident there. Had to start off the back of the pack in race number two this morning there, but he's working his way back through. But he's going to have to watch out because with Hayden Jackson, who cut a tyre in the last race, starting out behind him, he is going to push through because we've seen him in a lot of top five finishes, yeah. Hayden Jackson. So expect to see him push on from here as well and really put the pressure on Nick Bates. So that might slow them down a little bit. I really like Mark Crutcher. Looks like he might have got past Graham Cheney already as well. How good is that from Mark Crutcher? Is when Jordan Cox down there again from Jordan Cox Motorsport, uh, helping him out, setting up the car, and I think he's given a little bit of driver coaching there. You, to your point earlier, just watching Dylan Ch uh, Thomas really charging in there, but Hayden Jackson's actually done testing here a few weeks back at this circuit. As we look at the Beaches Sea Dew entry out of Canberra, the teenage raider, Rager Josh Haynes. Then you go back to Gardner. Thomas, Crutcher, Cheney, Rusty Wright, Zach Lachalpo, Greg Keem, Nicholas Bates now into the top 10. And you also think that the guys that had trouble in their previous races will have fresher tyres. As we get to the end of this particular weekend, you get six tyres in total, two from a previous round and four newbies. As we take this drone shot from high above the racetrack, Wicked battle coming here. I think Haynes is making some ground on Jackson Rice. Last time around, it was three hundredths of a second that last lap where Josh Haynes just had a small advantage over Jackson Rice. I'm not sure it's just leaving a little bit in the back. It's now down to less than one second, the gap between them. And Josh Haynes, we're looking to fight back in this. He was our number one qualifier. He went to the top eight shootout, won that as well. So you think he'd have the pace at all, oh, using a lot of curve wow. there from Jackson Rice. I think from various other categories as well. That's where we're seeing the cut tyres. I think you're exactly right, Matt. You, that's the, uh, not, even, not just the tyres, but rims, and that are really hard on the suspension as well. PWR Pole Award, as you rightly said, went to Haynes in that gorgeous bright green 37. It's a neat little battle pack. They're all lined up. There is Zach Lachalpo, the Tempest Solutions Camaro, and he is right in behind Rusty Wright in the crew commercial entry. This corner here, deceiving how hard you have to really measure the car's balance through there. You can't just blaze through there. You could end up into the concrete on the other side. Bates in the very clean number 24. That company is actually his son's cleaning company, Sam. So sounds like something you'd say to your teenager. Hope your bedroom is very clean. And I think that's the way it sort of all worked out. Isn't the De Beer refinish entry gorgeous? I wonder if that's a, a possible Bowden's own best presented recipient this weekend. Definitely on the list, I do believe. Yeah. Greg Keem and the team there. They uh, always bring out a gorgeous car when it comes to race. We saw it up in QR as well. And Rice still leading this race, though. As you can see, the pack going around turns number nine and down into ten, where it's a hard break, and you're really on the edge of the tyre through nine at full pace, and as they come out of ten, they head up to this little zigzag in the track there, and Mark Crutcher still holding off Greg Cheney at, the, at this point. Now, Jackson Rice and Josh Haynes have just gone through for another lap. Oh, it's, it's gone out by a couple of hundreds of a second. The advantage has gone to Rice there, so just maintaining that gap at the moment. I'm be interested to see how they manage the tyres, these two, because with only eight laps remaining, it's not a huge race. No, we yeah. do see the change in the characteristics of the car as those tyres heat up and they start to wear down. Now, let's look at what happens here. Faded to the outside. He just, I think, got on the hammer a little too hard to try and pull the thing up, and it's understandable because it would have been under load big time, Matt. Yeah, Lachapo in the background we nearly did the same thing as well. You yeah. can see that moving around. I was worried about that one, to be honest. <laughs> it's great to see no contact made throughout that, though. So that is just, unfortunately, an error there from Rusty. But uh, look, he'll rejoin the race and try and work his way back on the into this pack. Nick Bates all over the back of Hayden Jackson. Now look at the very clean 24. He's trying to make another position up. Mark Crutch is still holding out Greg Keane. Uh, Greg Cheney and Zach Lachapo. Keem sort of got his own little gap out there at the moment now. And as this battle heats up between Hayden Jackson and Nick Bates, that means they slow down just a little bit in the lap times. You get that extra couple of tenths a second. 
Rice, Haynes, Gardner, Thomas. You're watching Graham Cheney on screen. His lovely wife, Karen, is normally here with him, along with his daughter, Jazz. But Jazz is playing netball in Forbes, which leaves it up to just the young bloke who's doing a good job in the Hyundai series as well. So the Cheney family immersed in motocross, also in TA2 and in Hyundai series action as well, Excel series. As we take a look at your leader, doing a nice job, but he's still got Haynes right there. Radio Industries on board with Jackson Rice, brand new sponsor out of Morissette in New South Wales, radioindustries.com.au. They're an official communication radio partners with Dream Racing. They do Delta radios and Bravo headsets, and they have a really cool connection with the Jackson Rice family, and the doing an excellent job on the lead at the moment, but Haynes is lurking, Matt. I think there's a chance here if he can just get a bit of a run and put some more pressure on Jackson. He's been hovering around that seven tenths of a second now as he's just trying to catch claw back that gap as we see Rice just slide the car out at 12 and maybe you'll get a little bit of a run onto the straight here for Josh Haynes and we see it go down to 0.71 of a second. It's hundreds of a second now every time they go oh. around. Oh, Crutch has turned the car around. Now, oh wow, did you see Bates absolutely fill? He'll need his son's cleaning service oh, now. Oh, that's not very clean anymore, is it? Wow. Don't know what happened with Crutcher. We'll try and find out what, whether there was some sort of contact, whether he turned it around. We sometimes see the four car pointing in the direction from whence it came. I'm not sure that we can apportion any blame until we get a better look at it. Great shot here. So we work that right-handed sweep up. Haynes desperately trying to make some ground on Jackson Rice. I love that corner. That sweeping corner over the top. And a lot of these parts of the racetrack are actually blind crests, Matt. They kind of remind me a little bit of back in the day of the great Amaru Park, the legendary Amaru Park. And fun fact about that place, our tyre supplier, Max Dump, his property actually backs onto the lower loop of what used to be the old Amaru Park Raceway. Josh Haynes, uh, something happened to him too because he's got a lot of rocks coming out the back of that car now and he is slowing down. Jackson Rice is now streaking away. Look at the gap as it opens up. We'll go past our timing markers on the finish line here and we'll get a true wow. indication. That's gone out to 4.7, so four second loss. Something has happened. Has he done something to the tyres as well? Because we've seen it from some of the other drivers, not just in the TO2 muscle car, but the other categories. Look at the amount of grass. He's had a little yeah. excursion off, and we saw that early where he made that mistake in race number two this morning. Here's a bit of a high-tech oils replay, and we'll see it. You know, I'm wondering about the right, uh, left front corner, the tyre on the left front corner then, because same thing, the car was laid right over... It almost didn't even really look like turning right. This guy, however, has hardly put a wheel wrong. Jackson Rice, the Dream Racing entry. We're onto our final lap. His lead is blown out to 4.7 seconds over Josh Haynes. Brad Gardner in third. Dylan Thomas in fourth. Graham Cheney, Zach LeShalpo up to sixth. Greg Keem looking at a personal best of seventh out of Canada in the De Beers refinish entry. Hayden Jackson up to eighth now. And Nicholas Bates will be cleaning a lot of kitty litter out of that car, unfortunately. Look, Jackson Rice clawing back that small lead that Dylan Thomas had in the championship coming into this race. You never know after this weekend as he takes a checkered flag and gets himself a third race win now. What will the championship look like after this? Ooh. Oh, here we go at the end. Dylan Thomas going to have a go at Brad Gardner, but he covers him off and he Ooh. might hold him out. Josh yeah. Haynes is hurt. Now, is, that it, is it that left front corner on that car? Because to me, when we saw that, that right-handed corner, Matt, it just went straight ahead. It really didn't look like turning in. That may indicate a flat left front tyre. And when you saw that car kind of crab walking a bit, oh, Hayden Jackson coming at Keane. I think Keane will just hold on for seventh. But you're right, didn't Dylan Thomas get a run on Brad Gardner then? And they both closed in on Josh Haynes. You can see Bates limping home. Been a frustrating weekend so far for the very clean Mustang of Nicholas Bates. He finishes back in 11th as Matt McKeldon in 12th. And Paul Hadley. So Rice, Haynes, Gardner. Just, I'm, I'm interested to find out what is the go. Just look at the way that thing's not even turning. Yeah, he's, he's got, got a, a flat tyre. Yes. Every now and again, <laughs> I get it right, Matt. Not very often. 
but every now and again I get it right. You could just see that that car is laid right over on the left front corner, and when it went into that right hand sweeper, he just had no real purchase at all when the weight was transferred to that left front. Rice wins by 10 seconds in the end over Josh Haynes, Brad Gardner, Dylan Thomas, Graham Genie at top five. Yeah, Zach Lachalpo works his way up to the six. Greg Keane and Hayden Jackson fought around over the line, but Greg Keane got there in seventh, and it was Rusty Wright, Mark Crutcher after that spin. Rounds out your top ten, then he goes back to Nick Bates, who unfortunately had that excursion off the track there, and now he's got a bit of cleaning to do. Paul Hadley in twelfth, and Matty McKeldon comes through a lap down, so we did see him maybe take a little bit of a journey through pit lane there, but so in thirteenth position, unfortunately, Rob Leonard. A couple of issues there, yes. did not make it out, did not start. Suspected yes. blown engine. Let's hope that's not the case for the very likable Rob Leonard. Matt McKeldon had all of the candles blown out on the birthday cake earlier today. Let's hope he can recover in our fourth and final race which is going to be somewhat of an enduro. Great drone shots here in regional Queensland. Warwick and this amazing Morgan Park Raceway. Let's check out your high-tech oils race highlights right now. And there was a little bit of bump and run here in turn one. A little bit of contact just there. And yeah, Josh Haynes tried to close the door, didn't he? He yeah. was really pushing hard on the outside. He knew he had to make it off the start and he pushed, put everything into it. But Jackson Rice... He's got a lot of experience behind the race car and he's been doing so many laps recently. Yeah, uh, Josh tried to close the door and Jackson had his foot in the hinge, so he was never going to get to be able to close the door entirely. So battles were on everywhere. Tire smoke was from Rusty. And then we had this incident here where Rusty locked up the 55 after trying to get back by Crutcher. What we don't know is what happened to Mark Crutcher. We know he spun, but I don't think we saw why. Graham Cheney was particularly consistent, and so too, oh, all on his own. Boy, if I had a dollar for every time I'd seen Mark Crutcher do that, I'd have at least five bucks. <laughs> and look at Nicholas Bates. <coughs> He's just trying to avoid contact here, unfortunately. You see, get on the brakes, go, go out wide. This was a big moment, though. Chasing him down, and it looks like that front left has gone flat on him. You can even see it there. It's not the big black donut. It's, you know, a little bit deflated. Well, great win, wasn't it? In the end, Jackson Rice was unstoppable. Long way back to second, where Haynes limped home, and then you had Gartner and Thomas getting after it. Matty Cav, looking forward to seeing you in our fourth and final race later on today as we head down to the pits with Whitey. Thanks, Wade. Very happy, Brad Gartner. Brad, third again. Well done. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, hard to hold him off, but he was coming. Um, yeah, thought, thought we were going to get second there for a second, but no, awesome. So glad to be third again. And the car was consistent then, as you were dealing with, obviously, Dylan coming along. You were obviously consistent in being able to hold him off. Yeah, the car was extremely consistent. Made a bit of a mistake out of three, and we were lucky enough to hang on to it. But, um, yeah, just just can't thank Benny and Cam enough. Like, the cars, from what it was yesterday, like, we've got a much faster race car, so I'm really, really grateful. Well, you mate, well done. Great confidence build. I do have Josh Haynes with me. Poor old Josh. And I say, old, he's only a young fella, but uh, we've got a puncture there, Josh. Was there some other issue, or just a puncture, just... What happened? No, nah, just a puncture. Far out. I was slowly closing in Ricey at the end there and probably last three or so laps, I was like, why have I got so much push? Maybe the tyres have fallen over. And then, yeah, we were getting so close. And then down the back there, it literally let go uh, through the sweeper. Um, so unlucky, but I'm honestly very lucky to have even got it back on the track, let alone come second. So super happy the team's done a mega job and we'll come out strong for the 20 lapper. Good on you, Josh. Thanks, Thanks again. See you, dude. Good on you, mate. Thank you. And we'll go over to... Uh, Mr. Consistent at the minute, Jackson Rice. Well done, Jackson. Fantastic effort and a great race win there. Josh was closing in, as, you, as he said, yeah. but certainly there was a you know nice little gap for you. Yeah, and no, absolutely. You know, Josh was was putting the pressure on. I was just really trying to focus on um, just zero mistakes, like just so hard. You know, credit to Josh. He um, he had the pressure on me, but you know, good to bring the uh, the Radio Industries number seven home in, in first place again. Yeah, we're looking for the final. Yeah, looking good. Look, car feels good. A little bit of tuning up. I'm struggling a little bit through the through the midfield, but we'll sort that and we'll come back bigger and better in the next one. Good on you. Well done. See you in the final. Thank you. Well, there he is, our race number three winner from the TA2 Muscle Car Series, framed by High Tech, still framing here in the High Tech All Super Series. Now, Jackson Rice playing it down a little bit there. So he's got to tune the car up a little bit more, but he's been super dominant and held out a real dive into turn number one from... Of course, Josh Haynes there, but these two young guns are going to battle it out. We've got one more race coming your way just after 3pm this afternoon. 20 laps. Plenty more action still to come, though, because up next we've got the Replica Tours. Until then, we're going to go to a short break. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to the beautiful Morgan Park Raceway for the fourth and final race of round four of the TA2 Muscle Car Series, framed by high-tech steel frames. And this is a 20-lap enduro. Word from the pits, Rob, unfortunately, Nick Bates will not be able to take his place out of position number 10. That will just effectively move everybody up. We'll take a look at your grid. Jackson Rice and Josh Haynes, they've been added. Can anybody stop Jackson Rice? Brad Gardner on that second row with Dylan Thomas. You've got Graham Cheney and Greg Keem on the third row. Hayden Jackson and Rusty Wright on the fourth row. Mark Crutcher, a bit of a gear selector issue. He found the wrong gear in the middle of the corner and promptly spun himself out. Paul Hadley in the IES Motorsport entry. And Matty McKeldin, Paul Hadley wants to say to all, g'day to all the boys at the Dandaloo Tavern in Dapto. They're tuned in, all the boys at the Dandaloo. What could possibly go wrong there, Rob? <laughs> this is a part of the racetrack here that has been working the tyres big time. Or has it been the driving style that has really been brutal? Because we've had cars all over the shop through that part of the racetrack. Pace starts to pick up. Canberra's Josh Haynes up against Aubrey Wodongas. Jackson Rice. Paul Hadley back with Matt McKeldin. Fourth and final race of the weekend for round four of the TA2 Muscle Car Series. Framed by High Tech. Watch those red lights go out. And we mat it. Down into turn one. Haynes clearly got the advantage going into turn one. We take a look at McKeldin. Oh, no, Rice! We got cars going everywhere. Rice will rejoin in second last. There's going to be more to that story. Haynes, your leader from Thomas, from Gardner, from Jackson, Rusty Wright. Rips up the inside of Graham Cheney. I wonder, Rob, what happened in turn one? I don't know. I'd like to see the replay of that. Uh, couldn't see any contact, but we'll wait and see what happens. A ripping start from Josh Haynes, no doubt about that. The Beaches Sea Do entry. We got told off by Josh's mum. She said, I'm not letting go. Oh, and then not explain what actually happened. Apparently, it gets her a bit nervous. McKeldon runs a bit wide. He's got Jackson Rice in behind him. Dylan Thomas, Brad Gardner, Hayden Jackson. So Hayden doing a good job inside the top four right now. He worked lap one of 20. Rob Leonard, these look like such great cars to drive. Absolutely fantastic. You'd be surprised at how technical they are, but they've got so much power. They slide, they, they breathe fire. They're fantastic. Main straightaway action. Rob Leonard is joining me in commentary. He would normally be out there, but unfortunately, this very nicely turned out access line marking equipment, Municipal Works sponsored car is not out there. We're going to talk about your message very soon and about how you've based that whole gorgeous colour scheme. Let's keep our eye on what's going on in these early laps. Haynes, Thomas Gardner, Jackson Crutcher. There he is in the forecar. Wow. Giving Hayden Jackson something to think about. The 26-year-old from Maitland or Maitland Vale in the Hunter Valley in New South Wales. Driving the Maitland Glass and windscreen entry. Doing a good job. Let's have a look back at the High Tech Oils replay. Are we even going to see it? I don't think we're going to see the cause of it. We're on the Kubota car at the time. So look to the top of the screen. Oh, he's already gone. Yeah, you know, that would be unusual for him to not to do that on his own. Yes, it Let's would just be. say that. I totally agree. And there's a lot of cars trying to squeeze into turn two there, so. It's possible that somebody might have given him a little bit of a Liberace and uh, the old keyboard got turned around. We'll try and find out more about that. What we do know is that Josh Haynes doing the job. Now, the points for this, Haynes 228. This is the live ladder kind of situation for the round. Thomas second, Gartner third. It has absolutely been all one-way traffic, though, for Jackson Rice. As he continues to drop down the order, and he's in the pits. So I think... We may hear from Stephen White very soon. I think he's in the pit area. Quick look back at the replay. Oh! It looked like Gartner. Yeah, it did. Looked like it Gartner did. gave him a helping hand. And then everybody's oh. everywhere. Genie ended up with a grill full of grass clippings. 
So I don't know if we get a chance to look at that again, but it certainly looked like the 22 car of Brad Gartner got a little bit into the rear quarter panel and turned rice. And that will be one for someone else to sort out later. Yeah, poor old Elliot Barber, who's hoping to make the flight on time. There's going to be some kind of investigation that will go on here as we now see Rice up behind Paul Hadley. Slips by on the inside. Nice run as he goes by the immaculate IES Motorsport team. Rob, it's a quick trip for us down to the pits with Steve-O. Ah, interesting stuff, Steve. Yeah, we got your way. So, yeah, look, we've um, unfortunately found to, to the inside of this rim, which will pop over. You'll notice that the bead's been broken over here with the with uh, the contact. Yeah. So, unfortunately, uh, that's the flat tyre and that's Jackson's race. Yeah, so no real surprise to see that there's a post-race investigation, a PRI. So Elliot Barber will have to take a look. He'll have to be, well, Quincy. Remember Jack Kluger? Yes, in the old, I do. He'll have to do a bit of, not an autopsy, but he'll certainly have to really pick that whole incident apart and see was there contact or not. Haynes, you think he's enjoying this right now? <laughs> Definitely. Clear racetrack. Got a flat uh, left front tyre in that previous race. That's what caused the car to not turn in that right-hand direction because the way you load the cars, the weight and the balance of the cars, it's like a transverse situation. So when you turn right, all the weight went onto the left front corner. When you got a flat tyre, the thing right there wouldn't turn. So that robbed him. He managed to still limp home in second and he will be looking really strong for the round win here now. Dylan Thomas in second. Brad Gartner one point behind him in third. Mark Crutcher. Crutch is leading the Circo Masters class points over Russell Wright. Right. There's only two points in that when they came into this. Nice job from Jackson as well. Nick Bates missing from this one. They thought it was a gearbox. Turns out it might have been a diff. And unfortunately, we're missing. It's been a brutal weekend. You know how that works, Rob, Yeah, definitely. So, Brad Gardner, maybe not on the Dream Team Christmas card at list at the moment. It's not 100% proven that there was contact. It just looked odd. You can see a bit of damage there as well on the Dylan Thomas car. And I would say that's from that. There's a bit of damage to the front left of um, car 27 as well. Yeah, but again, I think that was Gartner's touching yes. of that le a right rear quarter panel, if that is what happened to Jackson Rice. Great to have your company here from Warwick in Queensland for Morgan Park Raceway. This is a really good facility. It's a busy racetrack, but good pit facilities. I like the, the sort of outgrid system that they've got here. It's a very intimate circuit. Although it's country, it's got a lot of cool big smoke uh, sort of attitude about it. Definitely, definitely. Here is Jackson. Noticed a bit of damage to the back left yeah. of Brad's car, so I'd say that might have been a bit of result of that uh, incident. There was a lot going on, Rob Leonard, in that corner. Like we, we were looking at Rice spinning, but you have to worry about guys trying to get out of there, and sometimes there's tags, and yep. boy, it is busy in that group when everybody's all clustered up, particularly in turn one. Now, we know as well, just seeing that Jackson Rice has gone by Matt McKeldon now. So... <laughs> Was watching in this shot now behind his keen. So Matt McKelton has got ahead of Greg Keane now. McKelton is up to seventh place. And Jackson Rice, I think he went a lap down. He did go a lap down. So he's going to do a heck of a job to wheel this thing anyway. Oh, this will be interesting. Now he's coming up behind Brad Gartner. <laughs> this will be... Um, no, no, don't get me wrong. He's not going to do a Rowdy Burns and Cold Trickle, the old change my tyres and then T-bone him. But he will take some great satisfaction in passing him if he's able to do that. Well, he's certainly got the pace because at the moment he's probably a second lap quicker. He's watching Jackson Rice go through there. Haynes is a big lead now. It's up to 5.5 seconds at this point. And the points as we head to City Motorsport Park will be very interesting for Dylan Thomas and Josh Haynes because Jackson Rice was only seven points behind Earlier today, Dylan Thomas in the championship fight itself. And now, all of a sudden, things have changed. And it's very important to finish every race in this series. Look, absolutely. Oh, look at Jackson ranging up behind Rusty. He's ageless, Rusty, right, isn't he? Yes, he is. We paired up for Darwin, and we think we must have been the oldest crew in the history of motorsport. Wow. Doing a heck of a job. Just see Crutch. 
Now, Mark has this tendency to... Um, sometimes his booty beats his head to the corner. <laughs> Let's just say that. So what we're really hoping is that he doesn't do that because this is one of his better runs. There he is on screen. Gorgeous turned out. Mustang. And uh, the big four on the door heading off to Nashville very soon, uh, soon to go over and support Nathan Hearn for his 21st birthday and watch young Nathan. We'll go down to Matty Cav in the pit area. Yeah, just a quick one, gents. We're going down here to Brad Gartner's tyre and we have gone over it quite... You know, we've had to have a hard look at this one because you can see there is just a small puncher right there where they've circled around. So, not a sidewall, but he's run over something. Almost looks like a love heart, Matt. Did you draw a love heart on that tyre? Looks a bit... Looks almost a love heart. Very romantic. A hole in the heart. Broken hearted. This guy is just cruising. The Beaches Sea Do entry ever since this team came into TA2s in the season previous. The kid has been fast. Yep, just saw a car behind him, so he's already starting to lap the field after just 13 laps. I reckon there's a good chance he might dedicate this win to his granddad, Alf, who's here this weekend. 83 years young. He's only ever missed one of Josh's races, so cool to see him here. Real family operation. His mum and dad, Steve and Kylie, very proud. And it's a, I always say it's Team McLaren because they've got so many people on that team. Not, the, not trying to say that they've got the budget, but they've got a bunch of people that come away with them every round. On screen right there is the 50 car of Paul Hadley. Very versatile man. Principal, of course, of the extremely successful uh, engineering business in the Wollongong region. Raced boats, actually has designed a full canopy performance boat. He raced Formula Extreme motorcycles before he got pretty badly banged up in a crash at Winton Motor Raceway. But I love it. He's so understated. He's an extremely successful guy. Still wears the tinted safety eyewear glasses. He's not into Prada or anything like that. But just a bloke. He loves his jeans and his work boots and might happen to have two of the most gorgeous-looking TA2s in the country. Absolutely. The two best-presented cars as a team every time. Here we go. Jackson Rice boring two eye holes into the back of the Castec Mustang. Rusty Wright in behind Mark Crutcher, the Circo Masters class. That battle is on. Cheney in behind. Oh, wow. Jackson is closer and closer. Whoa! And here comes the move. I think it's on. He's got him. Does he wave? Does he wave? Gardner will probably give the corner up. Smart thinking. Yep. That, that part of the racetrack, look how much gravel has come onto the racetrack from that, from that incident. incident. Exactly. And that's all around the track in spots. And that is that part of the racetrack in particular. That would get your attention because you sweep in alongside a concrete wall that kind of sweeps out in front of you. Absolutely. And going under the bridge, you find a lot of the time you've actually got the lock off. You're almost the steering wheel straight and just letting the car drift out to the edge. Oh, what a pleasant feeling. <laughs> it is if there's no gravel on the road. What is it like to do what you're doing now compared to driving the race car? Is this a, does this give you an entirely different perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I could do a bit more of this. <laughs> I still would like to be in the seat. You haven't finished spin, spending Jill's money yet. <laughs> she's out there somewhere listening. I can yeah, see it. There she she's is. looking at us now. Well, she's wearing the orange road cone orange, so it's very difficult to uh, not spot the lovely Jill Leonard, your lovely, long-suffering wife. <laughs> You wore her down and you've been spending her money ever since. Yeah, exactly. This kid is class in a lot of ways. Just the way he presents, always got a smile on his face. Very presentable team, very professional team. And the kid is fast. I really enjoyed his battles last year with Jet Johnson. I was just going to say that myself. Once his car's going right, he's on the pace. Sweet looking hot rod, isn't it? Yep. Absolutely Love stands the out. That bright green. And of course, in the family, big Dick Johnson fan. So they actually had the 17 last year and Jet ran the 117 yep. and now he's gone to 37 to run his own number and his own identity. The working lap 18 of 20. This kid from Canberra doing a mighty fine job. Yes, it was made easier for him, no doubt about that. At the moment he will win the round by 17 points over Dylan Thomas and Mark Crutcher after that spin earlier. And he's holding his own. He's still got a bit of time behind ahead of uh, Rusty and uh, Hayden Jackson. They seem to be holding their position, so There's I think still, that's the way they will finish unless something goes wrong. Still a lap and a half for him to spin out, yeah. Rob. What are you talking about? Yeah, don't want to give do the commentator's curse thing. Have a look at... I'll get down to Matty Cav in the pits. Come down here with uh, Alfie, just quickly and catch up with, obviously, Josh Haynes' granddad. Great oh. weekend for him, and now he's leading. 
Absolutely, in daylight second. <laughs> <laughs> What's the celebration going to be like tonight? I'm not going to tell you, but it'll come out of a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> There's only a couple of laps left. We'll let you watch. <laughs> I'm going to get into it. <laughs> Here, you know, yeah, Alfie. <laughs> Here I was thinking he was going to say just a warm Horlix and a can of oatmeal biscuit and I'll be off to bed. But no, Matty, he's, he's probably looking for some methanol moonshine right now so to get on it. We've also had a change of position. We've got Hayden Jackson up in fourth and Rusty's back to fifth. And Hayden is chasing Crutcher. This is a neat little battle. And look at Jackson Rice. Ooh, he there. is in there as well. So Cheney. Cheney's closed the gap. In behind the serial killer. Rusty Wright, I say that, meaning breakfast cereal. Probably, he's probably going to ask me to stop saying that after this weekend. It might affect his social reputation. Nice drone shots from this gorgeous part of the racewack. It's an amazing venue. I love this environment. I love this little town. One of Australia's best kept secrets. It is. It definitely is. One lap to go. This guy is just stomping them. The Beaches Sea Do entry onto the final lap. Race four, round four of the TA2 Muscle Car Series, framed by High Tech. He rips by our commentary position. Very smooth. Yep, very smooth indeed. Considering the times he's doing, he just looks like he's on a Sunday drive, which he is. Well, well done, Rob. <laughs> One minute, 16.8, Captain Obvious. <laughs> Isn't it funny how sometimes that occurs to you later after you said it, you go, oh, I can't take that back now. <laughs> Everybody heard me. Jackson Rice is the fastest time, 1 minute 16.80. Having said that, Josh Haynes has done a 116.84. So about four hundredths of a second quicker is Jackson Rice. And I think the next quickest time is, uh, no, it's only 0.2 behind. That's Dylan. He's doing a great job as well. Boy, we're into the business end of this one right now. So round winners will be Haynes from Rice and Thomas at this point. So when you look down, there you go. So Rice has 221 points. He will actually pick up second. Josh Haynes with 228 and Dylan Thomas with 211. But what a drop for his granddad's birthday. Fantastic. Alfie will be on the Terps already, I'm pretty sure. Congratulations to all the team. Dylan Thomas, solid job for him. Mark Crutcher. We won't get too excited. He's got to come and get the checker yet. <laughs> Another corner to go. Well done, Josh. Left arm out the window. Such a nice kid. Absolutely. No, look at this. Hayden Jackson right on Crutcher's tail here. He's got enough gap. Hayden. He, he closed up at the end. He really did. Whoa, Whoa. look at that. Great finish. Oh, it's coming. Whoa. He nearly pinched it. That is close. That would have been Hayden's best ever result. He almost picked up third. 0.087 by a layer of chrome on a Harley. That guy is our winner, Josh Haynes. Just superb. And he will be very, very hard to beat. If I remember rightly, the last time we raced at Sydney, he had mechanical issues early in the weekend and then just smoked everybody in the latter part of the weekend. So we know he's quick around that place and he will take the win. Jackson Rice will be second for the round. Dylan Thomas will be third. Brad Gartner, well, fourth at the moment. Let's call that unofficial. Well done, Mark Crutcher. Well done, Hayden Jackson. How about Rusty? Nice job in fifth. Graham Cheney, sixth. The birthday boy, Matt McKellen, puts the Kubota Mustang up to seventh. Greg Keem, Canada's fastest TA2 driver in eighth. Jackson Rice got back to ninth as a result of all that. Paul Hadley was a lap down. Unfortunately, DNS is for Nicholas Bates. Zach LaSharpo, Rob Leonard, thank you for joining me, Matt. I appreciate it. My pleasure, anytime. Here's cool shots down live in the pit lane. There's Josh. I reckon. We've got Dad. I reckon Alf might, out, far away. Alf might out drink him this weekend. <laughs> Bit of experience. There's proud Dad. Very, very cool moment. There's his beautiful mum, Kylie, as well, just off to the well, left. They're both happy. Oh, that's beautiful. That is absolutely. What it is all about right there. And there's, there's Granddad. Oh, that's so cool. That moment there makes my weekend. That Look at that. One of the best videos I've seen is Josh taking his granddad for a lap around oh, the yes. Sydney Motorsport Park. Absolutely. Smiles all around. An amazing job for that guy. That is for sure. And they're all pretty happy with that. Elliot Barber just gave me a nervous look in through the door just then our driver standards observer. He's, he's going to have to go back and somehow make sense of all that and work out what he's going to do with the Gartner and Rice incident.
Let's go down to Matty Kavanagh. Matt, boy, that had a bit of everything, mate. And are you going to have a drink with Alf? That's the big question. <laughs> Oh, we'll definitely be catching up with Alf a little bit later, I reckon. There'll be a few of us here in pit lane. But, yeah, we're here with our round winners, Dylan Thomas. Super consistent. Ended up third this weekend. We've got Jono Jennings from the High Tech Steel Frame to come and give you your trophy. Come through here. Jono, congratulate Dylan Thomas. Appreciate it. Congratulations, third place. Tough weekend. Yeah, we, we, were, we, we were struggling a bit for the weekend. In fact, our pace wasn't <sighs> too bad, but our starts were horrible and... Uh, you know, first race was okay. We got we got through. We got the third there. Didn't have the pace of the front two. I mean, Jackson was ripping all weekend. So you know, um, you know, and Hainsey was getting you know was pretty quick also out the gate. So we were disappointed with that pace in the first one. Well, we're happy with it, but we were doing close enough. But our starts were terrible. You know, and we got caught up on every start. Um, luckily on that last one, Jackson got caught up. Poor Jackson, but it helped us out. So I'm, I'll take it. Well, how's it look going into Sydney though? A track that you're familiar with? Yeah, we've uh, done pretty well at Sydney Motorsport Park over the years. Got a couple of lap records there in my younger days, but I'm, uh, I'm a bit older and fatter now, so uh, well, I guess we'll have to see how we go. These young, these young bucks are coming up and uh, really sticking it to us old blokes. Yeah, big weekend for the CXC Mustang. Anyone else you need to thank? Yeah, well, obviously want to thank the boys, uh, you know, Remy Brendog and Archie and the boys back at home, you know, even Carter and uh, Thomas. Good job, buddy. Little fella come out for his first race weekend. So, um, yeah, and um, obviously CXC Racing, Sensational Kitchens. Um, you know, without our sponsors and the support of the boys, we can't do what we do. No, definitely not. We can't wait to see in Sydney. It's a few months away, so you get a bit of time to clean the car up and go over it. It, sh it needs a bit of a clean-up. <laughs> There we go, Dylan Thomas third for this round. Next up, though, it was an unfortunate final race for Jackson Rice, but he finishes the round second in the points, and it's just accumulating you're in front of Dylan Thomas, though, because you're trying to catch him. Yeah, and no, absolutely, you know, like, I was a, like I'm, I'm gutted, to say the least, but, you know, that's motorsport, and we're just going to have to pick my socks off and, and move on. So, you know, awesome, uh, you know, congrats to the boys, and especially to Josh. I mean, he drove a, drove a really hard race all weekend and kept me pushing, and we're just going to have to go into S&P and try and scrape some points back. You've got to take away a lot of confidence from those first couple of races, don't you, though? You're really aggressive, got the move done early and got out in front. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think we, we was taking it race by race and, and sort of play by play. But I think we, we came and we did what we we're going to do. And it's a shame about that last one, but there's definitely positives to take away from the weekend. And have some new people on board this weekend? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we can't, we can't do this without our sponsors. So a massive thank you to, um, to Bob Selby Wood, the guys at Radio Industries, and um, all our sponsors that come on board. You know, we can't do it without them. So. Well, it's been John I mean, from High Tech Steel Framing. Give you a reward. Good to see a smile still on your face, Jackson. Ah, what else can you do, man? If you don't smile, you cry, so. <laughs> we'll see you at Sydney Motorsport Park in a few months. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Thank you. All right, now, let's big round of congratulations here. He's got the most team members, so we're going to hear a whole heap of noise with Josh Haynes, our round winner here at Morgan Park Raceway. you got a big smile on your face, mate. What's that from? I'll tell you what, that's better than getting the last Tim Tam in a packet. Uh, that was the best race. Um, had a blinder start. Uh, obviously, it's tricky here around Morgan Park. It's really tight. So I was trying to get Jackson around the outside at turn one, which I did. Um, really sad to see Jackson, you know, get in an incident. Um, you know, you, we're, we're close out there, but you never like to see that happen to anyone. So uh, I'm sorry for Jackson. Um, I'd just like to thank my whole team. Uh, Rob from Herzog, I know he's watching at home. Beaches Cedar, my major sponsor. All the other sponsors. Happy birthday to Arnie Norma. Um, and, yeah, I seriously can't thank my old team enough, so it's been unreal. Tell us what it's like battling out there with Jackson, those first couple of races. You got him in the top eight shootout, but he came back at you hard. Honestly, it's been some of the hardest racing I've ever done all weekend, you know. Like, we are so, so close that you don't know what you actually have to look for to be there. So um, we slowly chipped away at it all weekend, and obviously um, it's great to get a win in the end there. We didn't quite get the battle we wanted, um, but, yeah, super happy and grabbed some good points for the championship. What do you think it's going to take when we go to Sydney Motorsport Park next on the 13th and 14th of October? Are you going to be up the front? Who do you think is going to be your biggest challenger? Same challenges as always. It's Thomas, Rice, us three. Although that's happened, it's, he's still going to be there. So we've got to keep a level head. We've still got two more rounds to go. We need to play it safe. Um, and, yeah, at the end of the day, keep it on the black stuff and keep getting some points. Well, I think your granddad has got a, a bottle to share with you tonight. But we'll bring in Jono here from High Tech Steel Frame and give you your award. Thank you very much. Thank you. And what a drive there from Mark Crutcher as well to get the Circo Masters <laughs> Award. Big drive from him this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at your High Tech Oils highlights of the previous two races, race three and race four of the TA2 Muscle Car Series, framed by High Tech Steel Frames. And boy, it's been busy to say the very least. This is a look at the last two. It 
bit of a deja vu feeling about it when you go down into the turn one. This is the last turn one incident that we had in this last race. And this is where it all got UGLY. You ain't got no alibi. Ugly. Cheney, he just charged through the lawn clippings. Everybody else took a vase. Oh, yeah, there's no, I'm sorry. That's the that's yep. the angle. Not much doubt about it. But officer, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll leave that to Elliot. Just hand me your license. And here is where you saw Jackson storming back through the field. And this guy continued to blaze away. He is going to be really fast at Sydney Motorsport Park. I am sure that we'll have a field under lights at Sydney. Well over 20 cars. I know that's pretty, you know crystal ball of me, yep. but I think we're going to be coming out of the woodwork to run with us on that October 13-14 weekend, Rob. There is Paul Hadley. Here's the moment. It looked like he gave him a little touch. Did the car go a little unsettled it just did. then? Like, it did. Maybe it's like a Remember Me, the yes. old Rowdy Burns cold trickle. Knocking on the back door. Exactly right. Dylan was far. I love this. Just blazing it up. His young son Carter is off to America with Dylan later this year. Very talented young motocross rider. Carter looking for a big career in motocross. His old man's very good on four wheels, so maybe Carter will be even better on two. That was a look back at our highlights. Sydney Motorsport Park is going to be an absolute monster. October 13 and 14, under lights. Can't wait to get lit with the TA2 Muscle Car Series. And, of course, our great friends at High Tech Oils for the Super Series this year. On behalf of all the team, it's Wade Orange just saying goodbye. See you next time. Leave the speeding to us.